Let's turn now to a big story here this week. We're talking, taking a closer look at the tech trade. NVIDIA is the next big test for the market when you take into account earnings. But as it stands right now, you've got to look at the moves that we've seen in NVIDIA today and this week. Taking a look at today's moves, you're looking at another day of losses off nearly 7%. As it stands right now, when you take a look at tech overall, the NASDAQ 100 is down more than 5% this month, meaning that August wow. is already tracking for the worst month of the year. And we're only in day two of the trading What's hotter than NVIDIA stock this year? It's something that would be worth hundreds, if not thousands of dollars in the near future. The rare limited edition NVIDIA keychain collectible. Our initial stock vanished in seconds. Get yours now from the link below. Here for uh, for the month of August. So here to discuss what's ahead for tech, we want to bring in Ayoka Yoshioka, a senior portfolio manager at Wealth Enhancement Group. It's great to have you, Ayoka, and, and thanks so much for taking the time to uh, join us here this morning. I'm curious, we can start with NVIDIA because that certainly has been a wild, volatile ride here this week. I think the initial read on some of these uh, big tech earnings reports was that the spending that's planned here for AI, that that, that that is actually viewed very positively here for names like NVIDIA. But since then, we've seen some selling action. So I'm curious what your big takeaway from this week's uh, crazy week that has been is so far. It's been definitely a, a much more volatile week than we are used to in markets. Um, but we, you know, started, I think, July with the VIX uh, at, at 12. And so, you know, perhaps markets were a little bit complacent, um, you know, going into earnings season uh, here. And so, you know, now that we've had a, a good look at many of the tech earnings, you know, we did see that spend and most likely going to uh, NVIDIA for their GPUs. However, you know, sentiment and, and the earnings bar was very high going into earnings season. And I think you're seeing a lot of that sort of come out just because expectations were very high um, and the reports were OK, but nothing great. Is any dip that we see in NVIDIA still a buying opportunity? NVIDIA, a perennial favorite in the tech world, has recently experienced significant stock volatility. Despite this, its dominance in the GPU market remains unchallenged. However, questions about the sustainability of its growth trajectory have emerged. The company's core business in gaming has shown remarkable resilience. Gamers worldwide continue to rely on NVIDIA's GPUs for superior performance, ensuring a steady revenue stream. Beyond gaming, NVIDIA has strategically positioned itself at the forefront of the burgeoning AI landscape. Its development of chips specifically designed for demanding AI workloads highlights this commitment, presenting a massive opportunity for potentially explosive growth. So I think with NVIDIA, you have to be patient and, you know, you don't have to go all in right here, right now. Um, you know, when momentum starts to, to roll both on the upside as well as on the downside, it tends to continue a little bit. So, you know, for investors, we think you should get comfortable with some of the volatility. If you don't like seeing the stock down six to seven percent on a daily basis, it, sh it shouldn't be something that, um, you know, you should put in your portfolio. However, you know, the long term aspect and again, depending upon your time frame, you know, it could be a great opportunity simply because, you know, AI has very long legs, especially as so many companies are investing in what the potential could be with AI. And take a look at some of your top holdings here. Microsoft, Amazon, Meta amongst the names in there, among the tech giants here. I'm curious, coming off of these earnings prints that we've gotten this week, then who do you think is best positioned at this stage, at least for the next couple of quarters? You know, funny enough, I think when you look at it from this CapEx lens that everybody's been talking about, you know, Apple is up today. Um, and, you know, Apple only spent $2 billion in CapEx this quarter. Um, and, you know, their CapEx spend continues to stay pretty low, which means that they have a lot more free cash flow at their disposal to return to shareholders. And in this environment in which the economy is moderating and we're a little bit more concerned that the data is getting worse, that's kind of the area that you want to be in because you know that you're going to get that um, return back as a shareholder. Right now, some of the other companies are growing quite a bit, Microsoft, Amazon, and they will continue to grow you know, over the next several years. However, in the short term, you may not be getting that return back in, in terms of free cash flow.
For Apple, there is a lot of uh, hope about an upgrade cycle to come with Apple intelligence leading to you know, an upgrade cycle because people want an iPhone that has these AI tools. How confident are you that that's actually going to come to fruition? You know, it's it's tough. I think um, you know, behavior for most people is is difficult, and especially in the economic backdrop that we do have right now, where people are scaling back on spending. Um, and you know, unless you really have a compelling argument to switch and upgrade your phone, um, it, it's tough to shell out another thousand dollars or more um, for a new phone. So it, I think. Um, Apple's really going to have to demonstrate the value proposition of having all of those AI capabilities uh, within their phone. However, challenges are on the horizon. Intense competition in the chip manufacturing sector, coupled with economic uncertainties, could impact NVIDIA's bottom line. The company's reliance on a few key customers for its data center business also introduces risks. If these customers were to diversify their suppliers or reduce their dependence on NVIDIA, it could affect the company's financial stability. Ultimately, NVIDIA's future is likely to be a mixed bag. The long-term prospects tied to AI are undeniably bright, with the potential to drive significant growth. Yet, to sustain its leadership position, NVIDIA must navigate short-term challenges and continue its tradition of innovation. Balancing these elements will be crucial for the company's continued success in the ever-evolving tech landscape. I got to, to interrupt with a really funny story that happened recently. McDonald's in China. If you order a McFlurry, they ask you if you want a NVIDIA keychain with it, and it only sells for $20. But the problem is, they only made that available to less than 10,000 customers. So their NVIDIA keychain is already sold out, and it's right now in the retail market and sells for hundreds of dollars. And Elon commented on this, and he said that he had no idea that this was happening, and added, in that case, I will definitely have some just for you to know. The first link in description. Click on it if you want to buy this NVIDIA keychain. I don't know if this is a collaboration, but NVIDIA in China has posted about this, and also McDonald's in China posted about it. But anyways, in the next couple of years, this product might even sell for thousands of dollars. We don't get that many chances to buy rare collectibles like this. Anyways, find the link at the description and hurry, because we have just 100 pieces left. I imagine a lot of people in this room who aren't just technical, but they're also storytellers. This is a very technical room. <laughs> storytellers. See something like this. There's like 90% PhDs in here. And think... I'm not even going to ask you to do a raising of your hand, but I'm sure that would be fascinating. So they see something like this. I see something like this and I think, oh, okay, that's pretty amazing. You are speeding up rendering times. You're creating images out of nothing. There are probably just as many people thinking, what does this mean for my job? Where do you draw the line between this is augmenting and helping people? Where do you see the line being drawn? And this is replacing certain things that humans do? Well, that's what tools do. Uh, we invent tools here. This, you know, this conference is about inventing technology that ultimately ends up being a tool. And that tool uh, either accelerates our work, um, uh, collaborates with us so that we could do uh, better work or even bigger work, uh, do work that's uh, impossible before. And so I, I think what, you're gonna, what you're, you'll likely see is that generative AI uh, is now going to be more controllable than before. We've been able to do that with using uh, RAGS, Retrieval Augmented Generation, to control uh, text generation better, reducing hallucination. Now we're using Omniverse with Generative AI to control generative uh, images better and uh, reduce hallucination. Both of those tools uh, help us be more productive and do things that we otherwise can't do. And so I think, I think um, for all of the artists in the world, uh, what I would say is, is uh, uh, jump on this tool, give it a try, um, imagine the stories that you're going to be able to tell uh, with these tools. And, um, uh, and uh, with respect to jobs, uh, I would say that it is very likely all of our jobs are going to be changed. In what way? Well, my job is going to change. Um, the way in the future, uh, I'm going to be prompting a whole bunch of AIs. Uh, everybody will have an AI that is assistant. And so every single company, every single company, every single job within the company will have AIs that are assistants to them. Uh, our software programmers, as you so you know, 
now have AIs that help them program. Uh, all, all of our software engineers have AIs that help them debug software. Uh, we have AIs that help our chip designers design chips. Uh, without, without AI, uh, Hopper wouldn't have been possible. Without AI, Blackwell wouldn't be possible. You know, today, we're, this week, we're sampling, uh, we're sending out engineering samples of Blackwell uh, all over the world. They're under people's chairs right now. <laughs> I think if you just look, uh, uh, you get a GPU. And you and you I, get a yeah, GPU. you get a GPU, you get a GPU. Yeah, that's right. Supply yeah, chain. We all, what? we all, we all wish. Yeah. Yeah, and so, so, um, I, none, none of the work that we do would be possible anymore without, without generative AI, and uh, th that's increasingly the case with uh, 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 our IT department helping our employees be more productive. Uh, it's increasingly the case with our supply chain team optimizing supply uh, to be as efficient as possible. Um, or our data center team you know, using AI to manage the data center to save as much energy as possible. You mentioned Omniverse before. Yeah. Uh, that's not new. But the idea that more generative AI would be within the Omniverse, yeah. helping people create these simulations or digital yeah. twins. Yeah, that's what we're announcing this week, by the way. So Omniverse talk about now, that. Omniverse now uh, understands uh, uh, text to USD. Um, it could uh, understand text to... Uh, and has a semantic database so that it could do search of all the 3D objects. Um, and, uh, and that's how that, that young lady was able to, to say, fill, fill uh, the scene with a whole bunch of trees, uh, describing how she would like the trees to be organized and somehow it populates it with all these 3D trees. Then when, I, when that's done, that 3D scene then goes into a generative AI uh, uh, model, which turns it into a photorealistic model. And if you want the, the Ford truck to not be augmented, but to use the, the, the actual brand, um, brand ground truth, uh, then it would, it would honor that and keep that, uh, keep that in, the in the final scene. And so, so I think if you, if you, if you do that, uh, so one of the things that, that we talked about is how every single, every single group in the company uh, will, have, will have AI assistance. And, and um, uh, there's a lot of questions uh, lately about about um, uh, whether all this infrastructure that we're building mm -hmm. is leading to productive work in companies. Uh, I just gave you an example of how generative AI is impossible without, without uh, uh, NVIDIA, NVIDIA's uh, designs would be impossible without generative AI. So we use it to transform the way we work. But we also use it uh, in many examples that I've just shown you in creating new products and new technology that either makes possible uh, ray tracing in real time uh, or Omniverse that we can now uh, uh, imagine and help us uh, create much larger scenes um, or uh, our self-driving car work or our robotics work. Uh, none, of that, none of that new capability would be possible without it. And so one of the things that, that we're announcing here uh, this week is uh, the concept of uh, digital uh, agents, uh, digital AIs uh, that will augment every single job in the company. And so. Uh, one of the one of the the uh, most important use cases that people are discovering is customer service, and uh, every single group, every single company has customer service. Every single industry has customer service, uh, and, and in the future, uh, it's going today. It's it's humans uh, doing customer service, but in the future, my guess is that it's going to be humans still, but AI in the loop. And the benefit of that is that you'll be able to uh, uh, retain. Uh, the the um, uh, the experiences of all the customer service agents that you have, and capture that institutional knowledge that you can then run into analytics that you can then uh, use to create uh, better services for your customers. Uh, the the just now I showed you a a uh, omniverse augmented generation for images. This is a rag. This is a uh, retrieval augmented generative AI. And the thing that we're doing is is uh, we've created this customer service, basically uh, microservice that sits in the cloud. And uh, it's gonna be available, I think, th today or tomorrow. And uh, you can come and try it. And we connected to it a digital human front end, basically an IO, uh, the IO of an AI that has the ability to uh, speak, make eye contact with you, um, anim animate in an empathetic way, um, and uh, uh, you could decide to ch connect your chat GPT or your AI to the digital human, or you could connect um, uh, your digital human to our uh, retrieval augmented generation uh, customer service 
AI. Uh, so however you like to do it, we're a platform company. So irrespective of which piece you would like to use, uh, they're completely open source and you can come and use the pieces that you like. Uh, if you would like the incredible digital human rendering technology that we've created for uh, rendering beautiful faces, uh, which requires subsurface scattering with path tracing, this breakthrough uh, is really quite incredible and it makes it possible for us. Uh, Amazing graphics researchers, welcome to SIGGRAPH 2024. So it makes it possible to animate uh, using an AI. So uh, you, you chat with the AI, it generates text, that text then is translated uh, to sound, text to speech, that speech, the sound then animates the face and, and then RTX path tracing um, does, the, does the rendering of the digital human. And so all of this is available for developers to use and you could, you could decide which parts you would like to use. I got to, to interrupt with a really funny story that happened recently. McDonald's in China. If you order a McFlurry, they ask you if you want a NVIDIA keychain with it, and it only sells for $20. But the problem is, they only made that available to less than 10,000 customers. So their NVIDIA keychain is already sold out, and it's right now in the retail market and sells for hundreds of dollars. And Elon commented on this, and he said that he had no idea that this was happening, and added, in that case, I will definitely have some just for you to know. The first anyways, in the next couple of years, this product might even sell for thousands of dollars. We don't get that many chances to buy rare collectibles like this. Anyways, find the link at the description and hurry, because we have just 100 pieces left.